Welcome to Mariposa Woolen Mill Needle Felting Kit Instruction. Felting is causing the fibers to intermingle and mat together, and there's a couple ways that you can do that. Wet felting is one way, which is hot water, a bit of soap, and a lot of friction. And the other way is needle felting, which I'm going to demonstrate to you. The needles that you use for felting have ridges that encourage the fibers to grab onto the other fibers and the more that you poke it the more that it felts. It's always best to use a surface like a foam or a rice pad to protect the needle because it's fragile and it's also very sharp. Everything you need is included in the kit so let's get started. This is our winter forest uh, felting kit. So this is how we begin. So we start off with just creating our horizon line, deciding where we want our horizon line to be. Using the navy blue, just going to block in that color. Just pinching off a bit. Don't have to make it solid, because it would be nice to have just a little bit of the the brighter blue to show up from behind. And I think that's enough. And then we will map out the, the bottom, adding the white snow, leaving, leaving a little bare area. So when we work on our reflection of the, the lights, we'll be able to work in a, in a fresh area. So we're just mapping it out, adding tufts of color, and then we'll felt it down. In felting uh, application of color, it's not one and done. Sometimes you feel like you may need to add a bit more color to make the color more opaque. But if you want the color from behind to show, then you would do it thinner. It's just your preference. So what you do is just gently anchor those down. You kind of want those fibers to stay where you put them. So just gently anchor them, not really penetrating into the foam, just barely the top of the, the mat there. Once you have them anchored, then you can be a bit more um, aggressive in your application of, or your, your, your poking, I should say. So being very gentle still. I'm gonna do that over all of the color that I've applied, just being very gentle.
Now we'll work on the the background trees. They're kind of just a swirl of, of nice little blue color. So just dividing the roving, it just makes it more manageable. So we'll start with the tip of a tree, anchoring it. Creating a, a tree top. You need to add more. Just, it's up to you, the shape of your tree. Just pulling it off because I want to have some narrower parts. Just want to tuck it in. Separated a bit. Just little swirls of colors of this one color, actually. So just continue to do tree-like shapes in the back, giving some zigzag to them, thicker in some parts, just to kind of look um, fanciful or magical in the background.
So now let's move on to our tree. Using the white, we're just going to create more or less a triangle. Make that top in there. So what's going to happen is that you'll need to anchor this down and then we'll go back and give the indentions by adding some navy and the other little bright colors. You can fold it back up too. Uh, that just will give us a bit of thickness. And that may be the look that you want. You can always make it a bit thicker than just one piece of, uh, of the roving. You can layer it. Once you get it to be the dimensions that you want, then we'll start showing those little indentions by using the navy color that we had already used in the background. Just using small, tiny pieces. We're gonna shape our tree. So we want to anchor it and give a little tug, kind of helps it to taper off. So there's a bit of refining that needs to happen. You can add more fiber. You don't really want it to be straight lines. You have to do thick and thin. So you're really just wanting to watch the shape of the white. That's what you want to shape. So if it doesn't quite look right, the white part in between, that's where you use the blue to change that shape of the white. And a little bit goes a long way.
okay to put some at the bottom. Just trying to shape that tree, each branch. And we may have to add more white on top just to give it more fullness, but we're gonna to continue to do that on both sides. just a little bit of color. So using the same blue that we used earlier. Tiniest, tiniest little bit. I'm just going to be applying it in the white. A bit of yellow to the other side. So very little. small bits of red and just doing that on the warm side of the tree the warm colors the yellow <clears throat> and the red would be the warm tiny bit of green on the opposite side with the blue And what I want to do is just add just a layer of white on top and then I want to anchor that down then have a nice mix of colors. I'm going to do it extra thin. Just working on the white. So it does look like I've added a bit too much red, so I'm just going to pull that out, use my needle, and just retrieve some of that.
I'm going to redefine some of my navy. Very, very thin. Just going to anchor and give my little pull. And when you're adding color, you can work around in the area surrounding what you've applied because it's it probably needs more felting so just to make everything the same level you just rework that area so that it kind of matches the flatness Now I'm just going to add some trunk uh, black, very small. And start at the bottom where it's heaviest. And if you have too much fiber, it's okay. So just make sure when you're wanting to pull the fiber away, you hold down what you've started and pull away the rest. You need to add more fiber, white fiber. Just kind of vary that line to give it uh, thick and thin. It's just like painting. So next we'll just map out a little bit of the uh, the glow underneath the tree, this little magical tree.
So we'll just add some of those same colors. The yellow, a little bit of red. And the blue. We're going to have better luck with the red this time. So now what we have left are the little bunnies. Those are optional. Just use the navy. And we'll, after we put the bunnies in, then we'll add the reflections of the, the northern lights up there. So just using small bits to create a shape with the shadow of the bunny. This may prove to be a little bit of a challenge. For you and for me. So uh, let's see. Don't be afraid to pull it up if you don't like the shape that it has become. I'm just going to show you one bunny. So if I can get it right one time, then surely the second time will be a bit harder. And then he'll just cast a little bit of a shadow using very thin and just let it trail behind him. So you don't want it to be as heavy in appearance as the bunny itself. So just try and keep it really, really thin. And if it turns out that it becomes too thick, you can always add white on top, like I'm going to do there. Just to kind of soften, soften the appearance so that it's not, so it looks more like a shadow and not a really large bunny. So you see how that softens it. So that can be approached that way. And then the northern lights, if you want to use the green that's provided and a little bit of the purple. 
it's going to be the same kind of approach as the mystical trees in the background. So I'll do a, a heavier line and then let it fade. So you can just apply it thinly and then go over another area with a thicker, a thicker line. Apply it thin. And then give it a thicker, kind of like a streamline. You could also just reference a photo. You really wanted it to have more detail. So whatever we do up there, We'll just kind of give a little nod and a little hint that we're doing it down here. So just adding a little bit of purple as it's reflecting in the snow. Definitely doesn't need to be as thick. And just work across it so that you kind of spread those fibers out. Unless you wanted to create a line, then work kind of in a spread out way so that it has that still uh, softer edge. And you see that there's holes that are created. It's because I haven't felted the, the rest of the image. So if I give it the same amount of attention, then you'll see less of the, the hole pokes. So this is our winter tree, or winter forest, sorry, uh, demonstration. Thanks for joining me today. Hope this video was helpful. So to replenish your felting supplies, just visit us at the farm market.